Welcome to my switching routing and wireless essentials course. This should be the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is the second of three courses. Module 7 DHCP version 4. We're going to be talking about concepts, We're going to talk about how to configure it, and to configure clients. So let's go and jump right on in. So, first section is our DHCP concepts. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Again, we're dealing with version 4. This is about being able to assign IPv4 addresses and other configurations such as subnet mask, default gateway, and our DNS settings. Those are the main ones that will be uh, used. So being able to dedicate a DHCP server uh, on a router, it makes it more scalable and more relatively easy to manage. However, smaller locations might have a Cisco router to provide the same services instead of a dedicated server. Nice thing is DHCP v4 server dynamically assigns or leases addresses from a pool for a selected amount of time. The time selection is what really needs to be uh, fine-tuned to the organization. The leases typically fall between 24 hours to a week. When the lease expires, essentially the client must ask for another address or ask to renew its current address. So why is the timing really important? I've actually had a DHCP starvation attack happen because uh, misconfiguration. Essentially, we allowed uh, wireless clients on a campus network and they all got addresses for seven days, even though most students were only on campus for one day a week. Well, we didn't provision enough addresses, so after Tuesday, we actually had no more additional addresses to issue to anyone else that would be coming on campus Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. If we allowed our leases to actually be renewed a little faster, people on Monday, those addresses would be up for grabs come Tuesday, and so forth. So let's talk about how the HCP operates. It works in a client-server mode. When a client communicates with DHCP server, the server will assign or lease an address to the client. The client connects to the network with that leased address until the lease is expired. When the lease expires, if the client doesn't request a renewal, the DHCP server will return the address to the pool of addresses that are able to be reallocated. So, the process in obtaining a lease is known as DORA, Discovery, Offer, Request, Acknowledgement, D-O-R-A. So, DHCP Discovery, it's done by a broadcast by the client. It essentially asks, I want an address. The server will send out a DHCP offer as a unicast. I am the server, here is an address offer. The client will receive the offer. The client will then do a DHCP request as a broadcast, accepting the offer. The server will accept the requests and then send an acknowledgement. They will acknowledge the acceptance of the DHCP request. So uh, that last one is a DHCP acknowledgement that's going to be done at unicast from the server back to the client. That is DORA. That is how a client requests an address. Renewal. The client would uh, send a DHCP request, but it will be a unicast. And essentially it will go, I want to renew my address. The server will send a unicast DHCP ACK in response and essentially just acknowledging the renewal. 
All right, so let's talk about configuring the device to be a server. So we can have a router layer three device act as a server. So what we do is first is we do an exclude uh, list of addresses with a low and high range. We do that by issuing an IP DHCP exclude low address space high address. That's gonna be done at the global configuration. Next, we name a pool. The pool will be IP DHCP pool space the pool name. This will get us into the DHCP config sub command. From there, we can set up the network, default router, DNS. We can issue a domain name if necessary, a lease. And if we have a Win server, we can issue that as well. So let's see that all put together as an example. Here we have two exclude address lists. We have 192.168.10.1 through 192.168.10.9. And we have 192.168.10.254. So that means those addresses will not be issued. We then have a pool name of LAN pool 1. We give the network with the subnet mask. We give the default router. We give the DNS server. And we give the domain name. That sets up the network. That sets up the device to not to issue addresses that are excluded, and it sets up the default router, default gateway, and the DNS server. For verification, we could do a show run, we could do a show IP DHCP binding, or a show IP DHCP server statistics. So the first one is our show run, that's what we'd be looking for. Our binding will actually show the addresses tied to what MAC addresses, and when the lease would expire, Lastly would be the DHCP statistics. That's going to be the address pool. That's going to be the bindings. That's going to be all of the other statistics tied to DHCP. We can also look at the information from the client side. From the client side, if we issue an IP config forward slash all at a terminal, we can actually see the addresses. We can see the domain name. If we uh, Configure one, we can see the default gateway and DNS server as well as the uh, expiration or the uh, uh, expired time for the lease. Moving on, how do we ensure that we can set up DHCP? Well, it's not just about setting configuring it, it's also about having the service turned on we can say do not use DHCP by issuing a no service DHCP. To turn it back on, do service DHCP. Both commands are done at the global configuration. DHCP will not go through a layer three barrier. DHCP, DNS, DFTP, FTP. These services typically do not leave the network, these are broadcast technologies. So what ends up happening is we have to allow for a relay. If we set a relay, that will allow the router to listen for broadcasts on a specific interface, and if received, they can forward those requests on to the appropriate address. So that is how we can actually pass the layer three barrier. If we navigate to the interface, what we're looking for is issuing in the command IP helper address, and that will be the destination. So if anything is received in this example on interface gig 0 slash 0 slash 0, any broadcast for like DHCP that is received on this interface, it will then automatically forward to 192.168.11.6 because that is the helper address that was confined. So a list of ports that need to be forwarded using a helper address, NTP or time, TACX, DNS, DHCP server or client, TFTP, NetBIOS name service, and NetBIOS datagram service. These are all things that by default need IP helper addresses. 
we have a lab configuring DHCP, both uh, the client and relays, and verifying. So lastly is how do we configure a host or a client for DHCP? If we have like an ISP router, that router may be configured to hand out addresses. So on the client side, we may have a DHCP for a interface. We can actually do IP address DHCP, and that will basically tell that port it will be receiving its address via DHCP and to act as a DHCP client. Here's an example of how you would do it. Navigate to the interface, issue the IP address DHCP command, issue a no shutdown, wait, and it will essentially receive a IP address. If we want our home router to act as a DHCP client, all you do is the WAN side, you would set to DHCP. And by default, most home routers have the WAN side already set up as DHCP. So this kind of is moot because this is already typically configured. And that is it for this module. We have several labs covering DHCP, implementing DHCP. So in this video, we uh, learned about Dora. We learned about how DHCP actually requests addresses. We also looked at how to configure addresses and how to verify the configuration using the show run the show IP DHCP bindings and show IP DHCP service statistics. We also looked at how to turn on and off services. I think one of the most important things we learned is how to use helper addresses and the eight UDP services that need helper addresses. NTP, TACX, DNS, DHCP, both server and client, TFTP, NetBIOS name service, and NetBIOS datagram service. That is all we had for this chapter. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out. Thank you.